So the food system we have right now is broken. The energy that's required and the pollution that's created in bringing fresh food to your table every day has us in an in unsustainable situation. But there are some very simple things that we can do that require us to use what we have, things like people, unemployed people, derelict buildings, and waste, the waste that us Americans are so amazingly good at creating, to solve some of those problems. So what we're doing in Chicago starts out with this project called Bubbly Dynamics. It's, that's its affectionate name. We're right by Bubbly Creek, one of the most polluted waterways uh, in the United States. It used to be, anyway, from the stockyards. And this was a building that was completely derelict, uh, with whole courses of brick peeling away from the sides, no roof, uh, windows smashed out, burned out shell, and uh, full of graffiti, and um, a nice bunch of racist uh, white power bikers, a, a bike gang in there. So I kicked them out and uh, started to renovate this building. This is about 10 years ago now. And it's, uh, it's come a long way since Googs, uh, The Boob, Cowboy, Mac, and Santa Claus used to run it with an iron fist. Um, how do we do this? How do we get these people out, and how did we turn this into something? Uh, we built a community, starting with people that I knew from my own activist communities around transportation and bicycling, and we started to uh, bring them in and teach them skills, teach them how to make things. A lot of these people are folks who stare at a computer all day long, and uh, they wanted to learn. They wanted to do something that had some more physical effect. Uh, so we also worked with people who became tenants. The gentleman in this photo is uh, Yuval Awatsu, who is a fabricator. And here he's making the new handrail in the lobby out of uh, recycled tubing from a brewery and scrap restaurant sinks. Uh, we installed a green roof uh, with some help from the city of Chicago. Uh, and this green roof is actually a photograph of my daughter Zoe when she was a baby. She's seven now. But uh, we took the photograph, all 9,600 pixels of it, uh, made each pixel a sedum plant in the image, and, uh, and printed it like a giant dot matrix printer right down from the top to the bottom, 5,200 square feet. This is what it looks like from Google Maps. <laughs> so that was a fun project. And you know, one of the ways that you make sustainability fun is to make it fun, right? So. Um, the building now is called the Chicago Sustainable Manufacturing Center. It's a green business incubator. We've got about 35 permanent jobs in it, and they are fabricators. They are uh, people that make tutoring kits for uh, at-risk schools. We have uh, some office space. We have a couple artists, furniture makers, things like that. Uh, we have space for uh, seminars and events in the building. This was all done with recycled materials, working with scrappers at ground level, uh, working with a dumpster company, taking drywall from a drywall distributor that he was paying to put in dumpsters and landfill and saying, why are you putting that in a landfill? That's useful stuff. Insulation with torn packages. So gathering waste uh, and, and using it instead of throwing it away. Um, so I finished that project about six years ago or five years ago or something like that, four years ago. Uh, after trials and tribulations of all sorts, and started casting about, what are we going to do next? So I'm a big industrial history buff, and I love factories, I love old buildings, and I love finding ways to make them productive again. And so I started looking around for big buildings that I could do something with, and consequently I had to look around for things to put in the big buildings. And that's, that's the challenge, because how do you reuse a hundred-year-old building that's gigantic uh, and derelict. There are a lot of ways you can do that. One of the uh, solutions that I came up with was to grow plants, and I'm not the first person to think of this. Lots of people have been doing this for a long time. But uh, we started to experiment first at Bubbly Dynamics in the basement. For about two years, we grew uh, aquaponically uh, produce of various kinds. Aquaponics, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, it involves fish, fish waste feeding plants. We experimented with uh, aeroponics and um, working with students from the Illinois Institute of Technology who did the bulk of the actual work on that. It's a lot of fun. So all the while I'm trying to find a building to do this in the big scale project, the plant. And uh, what I came across after a while was a fabulous meatpacking plant from the glory days of the Chicago stockyards. 
It's uh, about an 87-year-old building, about 100,000 square feet, in terrible condition. Uh, I bought it for almost nothing, for about $5.50 a square foot was the purchase price, including three acres of land. Uh, and the broker that sold it said, it's a pile, uh, it's a strip and rip, you strip the stainless steel out and tear it down, and that's the value. So we've been working on it now for a little bit less than two years and have come a long ways. We've got all new windows in, all manufactured right on our street, on 46th Street. We're headed towards, um, oh, I don't know how many years it's going to take. It's take a long time to finish it, but probably another four or five years. Uh, but it's going to be a combination of food business incubator and vertical farm. with a lot of education thrown in, a lot of energy thrown in. Uh, inside, meat rails, uh, FRP, which is fiber reinforced panel, uh, making it all food grade. Um, so it's, a, it's pretty ideal for food production. Energy management is the key piece of this. We're building an anaerobic digester that is going to consume eventually about 32 tons a day, every day, of food waste from neighboring industries. The stockyards, we still have fat rendering going on. We have brewing going on in increasing quantities in Chicago. We have uh, Testa Produce and their fabulous new uh, produce distribution facility with a wind turbine next door. And they make huge amounts of waste, as, do every, as does everyone. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to close loops. It's all about closing loops, taking the output of one process and making it the input of another process. That's the key to it. So this is not just a farm. This is a farm and X, a farm and manufacturing, a farm and office, a farm and residential, something that can take the waste heat from lighting and the waste carbon dioxide from other processes, feed it to the plants, take the oxygen, send it to the offices, take the grains from brewing and do productive things like feed it to tilapia, grow mushrooms on it, compost it, and ultimately throw it into the anaerobic digester. The anaerobic digester. So that's not ours. That's on a farm somewhere, obviously. But we're breaking ground next month on a uh, fairly large plug flow digester, which uh, will make about 380 kilowatt hours worth of energy at the back end of the turbine. So we're installing, it's not our turbine, we're installing a um, former aircraft engine. This is the auxiliary power unit from a 747 that somebody else has rebuilt for us, which is connected to a 500 kilowatt genset. The, um, in combined heat and power, you get to make the electricity on site, which is great because that means you get to keep the waste heat. There's no transmission losses, and that waste heat can be used to cool the building, heat the building, brew beer, do a whole bunch of other fun things. And now you don't have to pay for any of that. It's convenient. This is what it looks like from the outside. It's just a box, not terribly interesting. A steam boiler arrived recently that's going to take the exhaust of the turbine make steam out of it. The steam runs an absorption chiller, also brews the beer. Uh, none of these things are, are new. All of these are existing concepts, but we're combining them in new ways. So we reuse absolutely everything. Uh, nothing goes out. Uh, you can see at the bottom here, in almost two years of renovation, we filled a total of four dumpsters renovating a 100,000 square foot building. That's not very much waste. Uh, folks like Dave here, uh, we've removed miles and miles of pipe. Some of it, if it's in good shape, we reuse in the building. Uh, if we can't reuse it, it definitely gets sold as scrap and turned into new things. It's a productive way to do it. These smoke houses, these stainless steel smoke houses, the ends of them, we have three of these giant things. This one was 40 feet long. The end of this one is now the office for our classroom space. We're using the ends of some of the other ones as bathrooms, complete with the smoke nozzles and steam jets and all this other great stainless steel stuff. Uh, keeping it fun again. Uh, inside, uh, we have a, a, a giant crew of volunteers. On any, any given day, we have between probably five and 25 volunteers show up four days a week uh, to do the work. This fellow right here who's jackhammering is a professor at the Illinois Institute of Technology. He's also quite good with a jackhammer and um, sometimes brings a, a, a lot of new insight to what we're doing. Uh, this is the main brew hall. This is where the brewing equipment will be uh, very soon. Uh, brewing is one of the most energy intensive activities, and so it's ideal uh, as part of the plant's internal loops. Uh, let's see. So a big part of what we have to do to make this whole thing work is to keep the food production local, not just growing, but also uh, the processing, the value added portion. 
and uh, making jobs in our community. So we're going to be creating about 125 uh, good quality jobs in the facility. Uh, we're building these kitchen spaces, which um, right now we've got bakers. Actually, we have three bakeries. Uh, we have um, nice things like croissants coming out. Uh, we have uh, a mycology department, so we have a laboratory. Just having been a meatpacking plant, it came with a laboratory. It's rather convenient. Some mushrooms are just volunteers. <laughs> um, <laughs> aquaponics is a key component of this. So taking fish waste, so we feed the fish and the fish feed us. The fish waste is converted by bacteria into nitrites and further nitrates. That feeds the plants. The water returns clean to the plants. These tanks that the fish live in and we make our filters out of are former bakery totes from a neighboring food industry, and they donate by the truckload to us. Wonderful things, food grade. This is a raft system. We have uh, three of these going right now, and in the back are germination beds where we do our seed starts. We're growing arugula, basil, uh, chard, kale, watercress, a few other things, in addition to tilapia in the tanks. We do a lot of uh, education. We have a lot of fun. Tons of people come through. A big part of making it fun is listening to other people and what they have to say and letting them go wild with a project even if you think they're a bit nuts. And we do. We let them go. So that was a panel discussion. Uh, we do regular film screenings, panel discussions, get people talking. Uh, we have art shows on the inside of the building sometimes. Uh, we do tours three days a week to try to tell people what we're doing and show them that they can do it too. Uh, we bring in certain elected officials to um, get them on our side and make sure that they believe in what we're doing and support us. We um, incubate smaller farms. We have five farms in the building right now, uh, growing a variety of different things. Some of their ideas are, are um, fabulous, some of them aren't, uh, and that's how it needs to be. We're also doing a lot of uh, documentation. Ultimately, we're going to be building a website that has a toolkit for other people to take a piece of what we're doing, the energy side or the food side or whatever, and do it themselves. And that's a key component of, of how we're doing this. Everything open source, the code that we write to run our growing systems, open source, um, how to work with scrappers, how to work with um, contractors, where to find waste, all of those sorts of things. We want to make that information widely available so that we see more people taking derelict building, uh, people with no jobs, and doing that food production in the middle of the city. And that's really the key thing, is that you have to make the jobs where the people are, you have to make the food where the people are, you have to uh, process it. You know, it all has to be as local as possible, keeping the money in the community as much as possible so that it's not disappearing and going somewhere else. And, al and along with that, we want to show people in our neighborhood, and we're in, we're in back of the yards, which is a, a, an economically distressed community. Uh, it's an immigrant community, always has been for 150 years since the jungle was written there. And we want to show our neighbors, this is how you grow food. This is where food comes from. A lot of them already know that, but they don't necessarily know that they can do it. And so we're, we're teaching classes in Spanish. Uh, we're uh, bringing people in to show them all of the great stuff that they can do too. So with that, thank you very much. <laughs>